Hi, everyone, and welcome. Our presentation will now begin. Slide one. Good evening and welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation, District 4's public meeting regarding the State Road 804 Boynton Beach Boulevard from Northwest 3rd Street to US 1 slash Federal Highway Complete Streets Project being held Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. The time is now 5.32 p.m. My name is Leslie Weatherell, and I am the DOT project manager for this project. Next slide, please. Slide two, agenda. The following presentation will provide information on the proposed improvements to the roadway, as well as the anticipated project schedule, estimated project cost, proposed design plans, and the maintenance of traffic plan. Before we get started with the presentation, we will introduce the project team, go over the meeting format, and the rules of engagement. Following the presentation, project representatives will be available during a question and answer session to address any questions regarding the project. Next slide, please. Slide three, project team. This evening, I am joined by Maj Alam, the consultant project manager for this project. We are also joined by Maj's colleague, Eric Moran, project designer, who will also be available to answer questions during the question and answer session. And we are also joined by Lisa Murphy, our public information officer. I will now pass it over to Lisa, who will go over the meeting format, rules of engagement, instructions on participating using the GoToWebinar control panel, and the non-discrimination policy. Next slide, please. Slide four, meeting format. Thank you, Leslie. Good evening and thank you all for joining us. Before we get started, we would like to acknowledge any elected officials who are joining us tonight. If you are an elected official and are joining the webinar, please use the raise hand feature to be acknowledged. Uh, Rahesh uh, Patel has joined us. Uh, Rahesh, uh, I'm going to unmute you if you could please just introduce yourself. You could go ahead and self mute uh, mute yourself. Rahesh, you are muted. Okay, there you go. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I, my name is Rajesh. Uh, I own uh, two businesses on Boynton Beach Boulevard, one on I East Boynton Beach Boulevard and 302 West Boynton Beach Boulevard. Okay, so okay, so he's he's a property owner, not not an elected official. Okay, thank you and thank you for joining us. Definitely. Thank Thank you for joining us. Um, can I ask for a second if anyone is seeing the presentation still on the screen? Lisa, I'm not seeing it. Okay, something is going on. It's there I'm now. seeing it now. You are seeing it now, okay, perfect. If you can give me one moment. Okay. So there are a few things to be aware of regarding the meeting format. The Florida Department of Transportation is providing multiple opportunities for the public to receive information 
and provide input. A hybrid model is being used for all meetings that consist of both a virtual and face-to-face -face component. An in-person meeting is taking place tomorrow evening, Wednesday, July 27th at 5.30 p.m. at the Boynton Beach City Hall, located at 100 East Ocean Avenue, Boynton Beach, Florida, 33435. Slide five, rules of engagement. This public information meeting is being recorded. If you experience technical difficulties, you can help. The, you can call the helpline at 1-813-785-0120 so that a member of our technical team can support you. All attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting except for the open discussion question and answer session. To provide a comment or ask a question during the question and answer session, please use the raise hand button on your GoToWebinar panel. Once your microphone is unmuted, please provide your full name provided by your comment or question. Your microphone will remain unmuted until your comment has been fully addressed. Attendees are also welcome to submit comments and questions using the GoToWebinar question panel, and a member of the team will respond during the question and answer session. Slide six, go to webinar control panel. On your computer or device screen, you should see something that looks like this control panel in the upper right hand corner. You will use this control panel to participate in the meeting by typing a question or comment in the questions pane or by selecting the raise hand button to be temporarily unmuted. Slide seven, dial in by phone attendees. To listen to the meeting, your computer or device speakers are selected by default. If you, if you prefer to listen by phone, select telephone in the audio pane of the control panel and dial in using the information displayed. For those who dialed into the meeting on a telephone line and are viewing a hard copy of the slide presentation requested or downloaded before the meeting, the presenter will announce the page number of the slide being shown on the screen. This presentation is also available at the project webpage located at https colon forward slash forward slash www.d4dot.com forward slash pbfdot forward slash city underscore of underscore Boynton underscore beach underscore various underscore locations dot asp slide eight technical issues if you happen to experience technical issues during the meeting please type the issue in the question pane on the control panel to report it you can also send an email to david d-a-v-i-d dot alberts a-l-b-e-r-t-s at qca usa dot com or call 1-813-785 0120 and our staff will do their best to assist you. As a reminder, the meeting is being recorded and will be available after the meeting. Slide nine, public notice. Public notice for this presentation, including information on how to access the meeting platform, was provided in notifications to property owners and tenants in the project area. In addition, emails were sent to interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, government agencies, and persons on the project contacts list. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register and via social media. Slide 10, non-discrimination policy. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting FDOT District 4 Title VI Coordinator Sharon Singh Hagen at 954-777-4190 or via email at Sharon, S-H-A-R-O-N dot S-I-N-G-H-H-A-G-Y-A-N at dot state dot fl dot us 
or FDOT State Title VI Coordinator Jacqueline Paramore at 850-414-4753 or via email at Jacqueline, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot Paramore, P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at dot.state.fl.us. I will now hand it back over to Leslie to provide the project overview. Thank you, Lisa. Slide 11. The project overview will cover the project location, the scope of the proposed improvements, and the estimated scheduling cost. Next slide, please. Slide 12. Project location. This project is located within the city of Boynton Beach. The area highlighted in orange on the map along State Road 804 Boynton Beach Boulevard shows where the roadway will be resurfaced and reconstructed. The area is shown in green from US-1 Federal Highway to East Marina Way and along Northwest 3rd Street and Ocean Avenue will receive shared lane bicycle markings. Next slide, please. Slide 13, project scope. The existing roadway will be repaved and reconstructed within the department's existing right of way. On the south side of Boynton Beach Boulevard, the sidewalk will be widened to 15 feet. On the north side of Boynton Beach Boulevard, the sidewalk will be widened to nine feet. In coordination with the city of Boynton Beach, decorative hardscape with a wave pattern will be added within the expanded sidewalk. Drainage modifications will be implemented to accommodate the expansion of the sidewalks. Pedestrian lighting will be retrofitted at the signalized intersections. Shared lane bicycle markings will be added. Pavement markings, signs, and pedestrian signals will be upgraded throughout. It should be noted that although landscape is not included within this project, opportunities are being created to allow for future projects to include it. Next slide, please. Slide 14, project schedule and cost. The project is anticipated to begin in the spring of 2024 and be completed by the fall of 2025. It is estimated to cost approximately $6 million. Maja Lam, the consultant project manager, will now walk you through the proposed design plans and the maintenance of traffic plan. Next, excuse me, next slide, please. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, slide 15. Project design plans. Next slide. Slide 16. This project will be reducing the lane width to provide 11 feet outside lanes, 10 feet inside lanes, and a 10 feet dual left turn lane. As you can see in the picture, we will be widening the existing sidewalk to make it nine feet on the north side and 15 feet on the south side. Next slide, please. Slide 17, roadway concept. So this is the same typical as previously shown as far as the lane uh, wise, except with a 10 feet raised median, as you can see in the middle. Uh, this typical applies to a small segment of the roadway. So this segment will also have nine feet sidewalk on the north side and a 10 feet, 15 feet sidewalk on the south side with 11 feet outside lanes, 10 feet inside lanes, and a 10 feet raised median. Next slide, please. Slide 18. Additional item that we are doing with this project include decorative hardscape features and keeping option for future landscape, as Leslie mentioned before. As you can see in the median, the gray color indicates hardscape and the green color indicates where the future landscape planter 
will be installed. The sidewalks on both sides will have a blue wave pattern, which will provide a better aesthetic look for the corridor. Next slide, please. Slide 19, lighting and signalization improvement. For lighting and signalize signals, we will be doing pedestrian retrofit lighting. Retrofitting means that we will be enhancing the pedestrian lighting at the signalized intersection for better visibility. Additionally, we will be upgrading all the signal push buttons to enhance the safety of the corridor. Next slide, please. Slide 20, share lane markings. This project will also include a share lane marking, which is often referred to as shadow. The share lane marking or shadow is where the bicyclist will be sharing the full travel lane with vehicles. Seeing the shadow symbol on the pavement, the drivers will be more cautious because cyclists will be using the same lane. The shadow marking will be provided along the outer lens of Boynton Beach Boulevard along both directions. The shadow will also be provided along Northwest 3rd Street, Ocean Avenue, and East Boynton Beach Boulevard. So we will be providing those marking on the street I just mentioned. This shadow marking will enhance connectivity to the intercoastal waterways, city hall, and marina. Next slide, please. Slide 21, maintenance of traffic. Next slide, please. Slide 22, maintenance of traffic. For this project, we are anticipating permanent lane closures throughout the duration of construction. However, one travel lane will remain open at all times in each direction. We will make sure the access to businesses, schools, churches, and residences will be maintained throughout the construction. Also, pedestrian will be maintained on one side while we are working on the other side, as well as providing opportunities for pedestrian to cross at the signalized intersections. The project will also have railroad crossing work that will be concurrently constructed with the road reconstruction. The flagger operation will be used at the location of the railroad construction. Next slide, please. Slide 23, maintenance traffic. We will perform the construction in phases to minimize the interaction to the public. This slide shows the major three phases. Phase one will be the construction in the westbound lens, while the existing eastbound lens will be used for both direction of traffic. Phase two, which is shown in the middle of the, on the slide, will be reversing the situation. The traffic will be placed on the newly built roadway in the westbound direction for both direction of traffic and the dual left turn lane while the construction is taking place along eastbound direction. In phase three, we will be constructing the middle section that was not done in last two phases. In phase three, you may see in the bottom photos, 
the two-way left turn lens will not be provided. Now I will turn back over to Lisa to begin the question and answer session. Next slide, please. Slide 24, questions and answers. Thank you, Maj. First, I'm gonna go over ways to submit your comments and questions. Slide 25, submitting comments and questions. The department encourages input and participation. There are multiple ways to submit questions and comments to the project team. If you are participating online, you can submit written comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can use the raise hand feature on your control panel to request to be unmuted. Written comments can be submitted through the project website at https colon forward slash forward slash www.d4fdot.com forward slash pbfdot forward slash city underscore of underscore Boynton underscore beach underscore various underscore locations dot ASP. You can also email the project manager, Leslie Weatherall at Leslie, L E S. L I E dot Weatherall, W E T H E R E L L at DOT dot state dot FL dot US, or mail your comments and questions to attention Leslie Weatherall, PE, FDOT District 4, 3400 West Commercial Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33309. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. Next slide. Slide 26, about your comments and questions. All comments and questions submitted through these options are part of the project's public record and will be considered by the department during the project decision-making. The recording of this meeting will be linked to a follow-up email to all persons having registered for the meeting. The public comment period will remain open through Saturday, August 6th, 2022 to accommodate the public who view the meeting after the live event. Next slide. Slide 27, question and answer session. We're now ready to begin the question and answer session. We will first address anyone who has their hand raised and would like to speak. Then we will move on to those who have submitted questions in the question panel. So let's take a look. And I do believe uh, Mr. James Bonfiglio has his hand raised. I'm going to unmute you. If you would like to ask your question, you're now unmuted. Hi, um, this is James Bonfiglio. I own uh, 413 West Boynton Beach Boulevard. Um, is is this uh, is there going to be any new information offered at tomorrow's public meeting other than what's been given today? Any new information? That's question number one. Question number two is that it was my understanding that this project also encompassed expanding the um, northbound and southbound entrances and exits from I-95. I didn't see that in any of your presentation. Um, is there been a change in plans or is there going to be another meeting about that? Um, this, those are my two questions. Hi, Mr. Bonfiglio. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, to answer your questions, the first question I believe was, is tomorrow's meeting going to be the same or different? And yes. the tomorrow's meeting will be exactly the same. Um, it will just be in person. So you're welcome to, of course, join us tomorrow um, in person if you'd like. We'd love to see you. But um, to alleviate any concerns you might have, it's the same information being presented. Well, I might um, think of some new questions between now and tomorrow. Of course, so. and we'd, we'd love to meet you in person, of course. And of Thank course, you. anybody else on the call, please feel free to join us again tomorrow. Um, your second question was regarding improvements at the interchange. This project starts at Northwest 3rd Street and goes east to US 1. The department does have a different project where we abut up to, match up to, that goes from Northwest 3rd Street 
to the west, which encompasses I-95 and a little bit further west of I-95. It's a different project altogether, sir, and being managed with different consultant team and everything. And if you'd like, we can provide you the contact information for that project manager if you need more information on that specific project. And if that's the case, if you can just leave us your contact info, um, we can certainly do that for you. Okay, that, that would be great because I, I mean, actually some somebody came out, I think between yesterday and today and actually put survey stakes about three feet from the front wall of my building. And I assumed that was for this project, but, but maybe it's, I assumed it was all one project too. So maybe that's for the expansion of, um, of the um, uh, interchange exits and entrances. So. Yeah, we are actually doing some additional, um, what we call it, subsurface utility exploration and some additional um, geotechnical information on our project. Um, however, we haven't yet started that. So it's possible that what you're seeing out there might be related to the other project. But I already have your contact information. Actually, you and I had exchanged emails. So I'll be, sure, I'll be sure to, to resend you a new email with the contact information for the other project, okay? All right. You, you you probably can't answer this question, but w will that project, I know it's different than this one, but do you anticipate that project will also have a public uh, question and answer uh, session like we're having for this? Yes. If they haven't already had one, they will be um, most likely having a public information um, meeting. And in fact, I will share that question with the other project manager that you're Great. looking for that information. Okay. Very kind of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Of Get course. It. And we appreciate you joining us tonight and potentially joining us again tomorrow. Yeah. Leslie, can I add? Um, of course. Yes. Thank you, Marsh. That was a good uh, question and good answer. Yeah. I mean, for tomorrow's meeting, as Leslie mentioned, there will be no uh, new information. Uh, only thing that, you know, as Leslie mentioned, we'll be able to see you face to face, and also we'll be able to show you our plan. You know, some uh, so role plot, some in you know, a typical section view. You know, is like a hard copy. So that's the only, you know, some of the opportunities uh, that uh, all the public will have to view. Have. And if you guys have any question, then we can clarify those graphics. Yeah, th that would be helpful because it looked like um, you had one. Um, or two maps with, with um, overlays on them it seemed to indicate that my property was not going to be affected by this project. It's probably going to be affected by the expansion. So I think your project ends before my property begins. So that I, it's easier to see it, you know, on a sure. map yeah. and in person. So I'll, I'll probably come by tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. And I'm thank you for that was good information to add in, Maj. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, I see that Travis Isom has raised their hand. So let me unmute you. Excuse me, Travis, I'm not able to unmute your microphone. Are you able to do it yourself? How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. I am actually the missus, but hello, I'm with Keisha. And um, we own Tiger Trucking and Logistics. And we're kind of, we're in the area and we're a little bit new in the game. And we're trying to figure out at what point do you put some of this work out for bidding? Because what we do is transport um asphalt or different things from one site to the next and we usually see projects going on and don't know when and where is the right time who to speak to as far as us getting um an opportunity to bid on these projects as a minority you know um contractor so can you enlighten us or give us information on where to begin so we can start a develop or develop a relationship with the the dlt is my question thank you Sure, no problem. Very good question. So um, to answer your question about the timing of when this project is going to go to construction, um, the letting for this project in, is, um, and Maj, you're going to have to help me on that. I believe it's October 23, which means 
the contractor will begin work in the spring of 2024. Letting is when we open the bids for the contractors that have submitted a bid for the project and the department selects the lowest responsible responsible bidder. Um, so what happens is approximately one month before the project lets, the project is advertised on the department's website. And it, if you can, you can go to the general DOT website, www.fdot.gov and browse through to um, contracts administration and all of the information about how to get plans and the dates and all of that information is available on that website. Um, I, the second layer of your question, I think, was more about um, the procurement element you were asking about and how do you make those contacts and everything. And if you can provide your name and contact info in um, in the chat box, Lisa, is that where you'd like her, her to provide it or the question box? That would be great in the chat box. It, okay, if you can provide your contact information, like your name, your phone number, and your email, what I can do is share your information with our procurement office, and they're the ones that handle the procurement of all the contracts, and they have a lot of different mechanisms in place for companies that are looking to get their foot in the door, so to speak, um, and that's the person that I can redirect your question to that can help answer those questions better than I can. Um, so again, if you can put your contact info in the chat box, we will regroup with our procurement office to get your question to them and they can give you some more detailed information about how to team up and subcontract and et cetera, et cetera. Well, that would be great. Actually, of I don't course. see the chat, but I do have your email address. Is it okay if Perfect. I just email you? Of course, yes, please do so. It, and that's even better because you can kind of maybe redraft your question for me. And then that way I have it directly from you and I can share that with my procurement team so they get it directly from you and not just pass from me to them. Absolutely, thank you so kindly. I appreciate you all. We really appreciate your question and your attendance tonight, thank you. Yes, thank you. And we will have um, her registration information, so we should have contact as well. Thank you for asking that. Okay, do we have any other hands raised? I don't see anyone with a raised hand. You can also type your question into the question pane. I just raised my hand again. This is Jim Bonfiglio, oh. if you don't mind. Go um, right ahead. To interrupt you. Um, do you know whether the um, specifications for the road and um, sidewalk um, widths are going to extend all the way through to the interchange or if they're going to change as you go west to I-95? That's a great question, Mr. Bonfiglio. And I I don't know the details so much in that project, to be honest with you. So I, again, will share your question with the project Thank manager for that project, because um, I don't want to give you any misinformation. Thank you. Very good. Okay, thank you for your question. And if anyone else would like to raise their hand, James, are you raising your hand? Got another question, yes. Sure. Um, at, I, I recall seeing the uh, bike lanes that were marked, um, but is there, is there gonna be a dedicated bike lane or the bikes are going to share the roadway with the vehicles on the northbound, the northern and southern uh, lanes going eastbound and westbound? Do you understand my question? Great. Yeah, great question, James, um, or Mr. Bonviglio, excuse me. And Lisa, right. can, I ask, can I ask that you go back to the slide that has our typical sections on it? Um, I believe it was, let me see, slide. Yep, yeah, slide, I think 16 or 17. Yeah, you went past it. Yeah, okay, so to answer your question, um, the, the shared lane markings, or uh, they're commonly referred to as sharrows, are going to be um, put in the outside travel lane. So in that pictorial you see on the screen, you can see the bicyclist is sharing the roadway 
um, with the vehicles. Now, on this particular roadway, because we are widening the sidewalks so much, the nine feet on the north side and the 15 feet on the south side, bicyclists can also share the sidewalk um, with the pedestrians. In addition, um, Lisa, may I ask you to go to slide 12, please? Great. In addition to the improvements we're doing on Boynton, which is the wider sidewalks and the Sharrows, we are also marking the local streets of Northwest Third, going from Boynton Beach Boulevard south a few blocks to Ocean Avenue, and then all along Ocean Avenue from Northwest Third all the way to US 1, and then from US 1 to the marina on those local streets. Um, which have less traffic, obviously, than Boynton Beach Boulevard and are more local, uh, local in nature. We are also providing the sharrows on those facilities as well that bicyclists will be able to use as an alternate to biking along Boynton Beach Boulevard, lower speeds, less traffic. Um, respectfully, I think it's a little more dangerous to put the bicycles on the sidewalks uh, as opposed to putting them into the roadways. Uh, because, you know, as, as much as cars are disrespectful of bicyclists, uh, bicyclists are disrespectful of pedestrians on the, on the sidewalks, I think. And it, probably more so than the, 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 the uh, auto drivers. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I sat on Ocean Ridge Planning and Zoning for 15 years and I was a two-term commissioner during, especially during the time that they um, required the bike lanes on on Ocean Boulevard and Old Ocean Boulevard, you know, and it was it was a mess because of uh, of the the right of ways that were there, and it just you know. So I've got some experience of dealing with the bicycle lanes and sharing, and the road sharing and the sidewalk sharing, and I, I respectfully think it's a bit more dangerous to let them share the let the bicyclists share the sidewalk. And it's probably dangerous to let them ride in in the traffic bicyclists ride in the traffic lane without a dedicated um, a dedicated bicycle lane. But th that's my comment, I guess, not my question. We appreciate your comments, sir, and that's why we were looking for as many opportunities as possible, which is a big part of the reason why we're providing the alternate um, bike path on the local streets that are um, lower speed in nature and have less traffic. Um, while we are putting the sharrows on the roadway along Boynton, and like you said, you, the bikes can ride on the sidewalk. However, we don't mark the sidewalk that bikes should be using it. You know, it's, it is optional to the person on the bicycle if they want to do it or not. We mark it as a sharrow on the roadway facility. So we're trying to, we're trying to strike that balance between the vehicular traffic and the pedestrians and the bicyclists. And I really do appreciate your comment. Thank you. My, my experience getting in and out of my driveway uh, onto uh, Boynton Beach Boulevard, and there are more bicyclists, bicyclists than you would think there would be, and most of them ride on the sidewalk. And it's frankly difficult sometimes to see them when you're, you know, pulling out of the driveway from my building, especially when they're coming. Um, my, my driveway is on the uh, east side of my building, and it's hard to see the bicyclists when they're on the sidewalk riding from uh, west to east. Um, I, I've got to really got to approach the uh, uh, the roadway uh, from my drive slowly and carefully because you never know when, you, especially if you go hit a bicyclist that's going a little bit faster than normal. Uh, it is it's not a uh, an optimal situation when bicyclists bicyclists use the uh, the sidewalk. I understand your concern. Thank you for your comment. Okay. I'll mute, mute myself. I, I was gonna ask, did you have any other questions before you mute yourself? <laughs> we might see you tomorrow night. So if we see you tomorrow night, great. We'd love to have you again. So Lisa, I'll turn it over back to you. Okay, and I'm just looking through the list. Um, if anyone else would like to ask a question, please feel free to raise your hand or you can type it into the question box. We have 
the contact information for Tiger Trucking and Logistics. Thank you for sending us that. And we'll just give it another minute if anyone would like to ask. Okay, we have another question. Will you be maintaining access to stores? And I believe Caleb Jean submitted that question. Great question. Um, Lisa, may I ask you to go to the MOT slide, which is slide 22, please? Sure. Great. Um, Caleb, thank you for your question. Um, hopefully you can see there on the screen, bullet number two, Access will be maintained to all the residents, businesses, churches, um, schools along the corridor. So if you have a driveway connection today, um, it will be maintained during construction. Our con contractor and CEI team, once they're hired and construction starts, they what they tend to do is they will have another meeting similar to this to let the community know that they're gonna be starting construction, as well as they will interact with all of the residents and business members along the corridor to share with you what's going on and when things will happen. So again, to answer your question, yes, all the access to all of the businesses, schools, churches, and residences along the corridor will be maintained throughout the life of the project. And thank you for your question. Yes, thank you for your question. Okay. Do we have any other questions that anyone would like to submit? We'll give it just another minute. Lisa, while we're waiting for any additional questions, um, I would just like to reiterate, I mentioned it in the presentation earlier, however, I did just want to reiterate to um, all of our attendees on the call today that all of the work we are doing is within the existing DOT right-of-way today. We are not acquiring any additional right-of-way on this project from Northwest 3rd to Federal Highway. Um, to complete the project. So again, no right-of-way acquisition. Great. Thank you, Lisa. No problem. And I don't believe I see any other questions coming in. So since there don't seem to be any more questions from the audience, and Leslie has already made her clarification. Um, do you have any closing remarks you would like to give, Leslie? Thanks, Lisa. We really just want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Hopefully, this format of having a virtual meeting was really conducive you know, to your work-life balance, and we hope that that's the case. If you do want to join us tomorrow at the, the in-person meeting, we'd love to see you and meet you in person. Um, but if not, we respect your time. Um, and again, we really appreciate all of the comments and questions you've provided and interacted with us today. Public involvement is very critical to the department's success. And it's not just our success, it's our partnership with you all, the public, that will make this project a project a success. And the last thing I do want to mention is this is actually a partnership with the department and the city of Boynton Beach. This um, corridor improvement is a vision that the city of Boynton Beach has, and we're working collaboratively with them to make it a reality. Great. And now that we have addressed all questions, we're ready to close the meeting. We thank you Lisa, again. I'm, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. I think we do oh, no have problem. another question, Mr. Harris. Oh yes, Mr. Harris raised his hand. Are you able to unmute? Hello? Okay, there we go. Hello, we can hear you. How are you doing? Uh, can you go back to the slide because I'm confused a little bit. You're, you're going from 
east and west, but I saw on the slide it said north and south. Yeah, Lisa, can you go back to the location map um, slide? I think it was, let's see, slide 12, please. Great, so Mr. Harris, this is um, kind of a quick overview of the project. Um, the reconstruction repaving on Boynton Beach Boulevard is the orange and it starts at Northwest 3rd Street and it goes east to US 1. And then the sharrows on the local street, which are the pavement markings, um, we're doing those on the green markings on the, the um, slide there, which is um, Northwest 3rd Street to the south, and then Ocean Avenue, and then from Boynton Beach Boulevard from US 1 to the marina. So that's the distinction in what's going on on the project. Oh, so the one section going into Ocean is going to be the north-south. They're going to get the Sharrows. The Sharrows, right. And there will be Sharrows on Boynton also. So there, there's everywhere on those, the green and the orange, are Sharrows. And then Boynton, the orange, in addition to the Sharrows, is getting the changes to the typical section that we showed on a couple of those slides before. Does that help clarify um, the distinction for you? I got it now. Okay, Thank you. great. Good question. Thank you for asking. Yes, thank you for that question. And let me just go ahead and make sure we haven't missed anyone else before we close this out. And I do not see any more raised hands at this time. So we thank you again for participating in tonight's public meeting. We hope you found it to be informative. Once again, here's the contact information for Leslie Weatherall, FDOT project manager. She can be reached via email, leslie, L-E-S-L-I-E dot Weatherell, W-E-T-H-E-R-E-L-L -L -L, at dot.state.fl.us. You can send her mail at attention, Leslie Weatherall, 3400 West Commercial Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33309, or by phone, 954-777-4438 toll free at 866-336-8435, extension 4438. Please submit any additional comments or questions to Leslie by August 6th. And we remind you once again that tomorrow evening there will be an in-person open house meeting at Boynton Beach City Hall, located at 100 East Ocean Avenue, Boynton Beach, Florida, 33435. Anyone who was not able to attend tonight's meeting or who has further questions for the project team is encouraged to attend. A link to the recording of this meeting will be sent to anyone who registered for tonight's meeting and will also be available on the project webpage. And we can go on to the last slide. This concludes our presentation. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation and our presenters, we thank you so much for joining us today and we hope you all have a good evening and stay safe. Good night.